Welcome back, y'all. My name is Ant Harge, and today is day 134 of 365 of studying and reading the Bible. And today we're wrapping up 2 Kings, reading chapters 24 through 25. But you already know what to do. Go ahead and hit the like button so that the word of God can spread to more people. And before we get started, let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we just come to you humble and thankful for everything that you do in our lives, God. Lord, we thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your mercy that endures forever and your grace that is sufficient. Lord, we thank you for sending down your only begotten son, making the word become flesh for our sins, that we may not have to pay the wages of death or that we may not have to pay the wages of sin, God. Lord, we thank you so much for everything that you're doing in our lives, God. We thank you for the path that you have set, the narrow path of righteousness. And we just ask that you continuously guide us upon it, God. Lord, we thank you for the food that goes in our mouths, the clothes that goes over our backs and the roof that's over our heads, God. Lord, we thank you so much for everything that you're doing and have already done. And Lord, if you don't do anything else, and Lord, I just ask that you watch over every listener and reader here today and you grant them the serenity to accept the things that they may, cannot change, the courage to change the things that they can and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. In chapter 24, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon invades Judah leading to the capture and exile of Jehoiachin and many others. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his vassal for three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. And the Lord sent against him raiding bands of Chaldeans, bands of Syrians, bands of Moabites, and bands of the people of Ammon. He sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken by his servants, the prophets. Surely at the commandment of the Lord this came upon Judah, to remove them from his sight because of the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he had done, and also because of the innocent blood that he had shed. For he had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord would not pardon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Jehoiakim rested with his fathers. Then Jehoiakim, his son, reigned in his place. And the king of Egypt did not come out of his land any more. For the king of Babylon had taken all that belonged to the king of Egypt from the brook of Egypt to the river Euphrates. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. His mother's name was Nehashta, the daughter of El Nathan of Jerusalem. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father had done. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city as his servants were besieging it. Then Jehoiakim, king of Judah, his mother, his servants, his princes, and his officers went out to the king of Babylon. And the king of Babylon, in the eighth year of his reign, took him prisoner. And he carried out from there all the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. And he cut in pieces all the articles of gold which Solomon, king of Israel, had made in the temple of the Lord, as the Lord had said. Also he carried into captivity all Jerusalem, all the captains and all the mighty men of valor, 10,000 captives, and all the craftsmen and smiths. None remained except the poorest people of the land. And he carried Jehoiakim captive to Babylon. The king's mother, the king's wives, his officers, and the mighty of the land he carried into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. All the valiant men, 7,000, and craftsmen and smiths, 1,000, all who were strong and fit for war, these the king of Babylon brought captive to Babylon. 
Then the king of Babylon made Mataniah, Jehoiakim's uncle, king in his place, and changed his name to Zedekiah. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hermutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. He also did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For because of the anger of the Lord, this happened in Jerusalem and Judah, that he finally cast them out from his presence. Then Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Chapter 25 recounts the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonians, the destruction of the temple, and the exile of the remaining Judean people, marking the end of the kingdom of Judah. Now it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army came against Jerusalem and encamped against it. And they built a siege wall against it all around. So the city was besieged until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. By the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine had become so severe in the city that there was no food for the people of the land. Then the city wall was broken through, and all the men of war fled at night by way of the gate between two walls, which was by the king's garden, even though the Chaldeans were still encamped all around against the city. And the king went by way of the plain. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued the king, and they overtook him in the plains of Jericho. All his army was scattered from him. So they took the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon at Riblah, and they pronounced judgment on him. Then they killed the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, put out the eyes of Zedekiah, bound him with bronze fetters, and took him to Babylon. And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which was the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar the captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem. He burned the house of the Lord and the king's house. All the houses of Jerusalem, that is, all the houses of the great, he burned with fire. And all the army of the Chaldeans who were with the captain of the guard broke down the walls of Jerusalem all around. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive the rest of the people who remained in the city and the defectors who had deserted to the king of Babylon with the rest of the multitude. But the captain of the guard left some of the poor of the land as vine dressers and farmers. The bronze pillars that were in the house of the Lord and the carts and the bronze sea that were in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans broke in pieces and carried their bronze to Babylon. They also took away the pots, the shovels, the trimmers, the spoons, and all the bronze utensils with which the priests ministered, the firepans and the basins, the things of solid gold and solid silver, the captain of the guard took away, the two pillars, one sea, and the carts which Solomon had made for the house of the Lord. The bronze of all these articles was beyond measure, the height of one pillar was 18 cubits, and the capital on it was of bronze. The height of the capital was three cubits, and the network and pomegranates all around the capital were all of bronze. The second pillar was the same, with a network. And the captain of the guard took Siriah, the chief priest, Zephaniah, the second priest, and the three doorkeepers. He also took out of the city an officer who had charge of the men of war, five men of the king's close associates who were found in the city, the chief recruiting officer of the army who mustered the people of the land, and sixty men of the people of the land who were found in the city. 
So Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, took these and brought them to the king of Babylon at Riblah. Then the king of Babylon struck them and put them to death at Riblah in the land of Hamath. Thus Judah was carried away captive from its own land. Then he made Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, governor over the people who remained in the land of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had left. Now, when all the captains of the armies, they and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedaliah governor, they came to Gedaliah at Mizpah, Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, Johanan, the son of Kareah, Sariah, the son of Tanhumith, the Netaphathite, and Jeazaniah, the son of a Maacathite, they and their men. And Gedaliah took an oath before them and their men and said to them, Do not be afraid of the servants of the Chaldeans. Dwell in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. But it happened in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishama, of the royal family, came with ten men and struck and killed Gedaliah, the Jews, as well as the Chaldeans who were with him at Mizpah. And all the people, small and great, and the captains of the armies arose and went to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldeans. Now it came to pass, in the thirty-seventh year of the captivity of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, released Jehoiakim, king of Judah, from prison. He spoke kindly to him and gave him a more prominent seat than those of the kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiakim changed from his prison garments, and he ate bread regularly before the king all the days of his life. And as for his provisions, there was a regular ration given him by the king, a portion for each day, all the days of his life. But that's all for day 134, and I really appreciate you being a part of this. And tomorrow we begin First Chronicles, and I'll kind of have a summary of kind of what that's all about. Um, because there's going to be a lot of what feels like it's repeating from First and Second Kings, and even a little bit of Second Samuel within First and Second Chronicles. And we're going to begin in First Chronicles, and there's going to be a lot of genealogy, so meaning that there's going to be um, a lot of listing off who's the son of who and everything like that and what they did and all that stuff. Um, but I'll explain tomorrow why that's super important, because I know it can sometimes feel boring if we don't understand why it's necessary. And so I'm going to have something like a summary to kind of sum it all up and make it make sense. So even though we're reading it and it may feel a little lackluster, <laughs> I guess you can say, there's a purpose behind it. And once you understand that purpose, then it, it, it makes a little bit more sense why. So other than that, y'all let me know which part stood out to you in the comment section and let's keep the ministry going down there. And if this was a blessing to you, go ahead and share this with somebody so it can be a blessing to them too. And if you're ready for the next reading, I'll meet you there.